New Louisville coach Pat Kelsey is working really hard at the Revival, and he's had a nice couple birthday presents this week. You are Locked On College Basketball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, what's up? It's Thursday. Welcome into the Locked On College Basketball Podcast, the only daily national college hoop show out there. I'm your host today, Isaac Shade, and you're joining me at the place to get your college basketball content every single day. I want to thank you for making us your first listen or watch and remind you, you can get every episode ad-free on Amazon Music. Special shout out to all of you everydayers out there, as well as all the members of the Locked On College Basketball Discord community. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Coming up on the show today, we're looking ahead a little bit later in the show to some MTEs that will occur Feast Week 2025, a little bit of 25, a little bit of 24. We got the release of the Maui 2025 field, and uh, yeah, not so hot. And then the Battle for Atlantis has found their Creighton replacement for this year. We'll talk about that. Yeah, another like, okay. But first, some Louisville. We got to talk the cards here. Some great conversation because they have added two more uh, players to their cadre for the upcoming season this week. Let's start with uh, some transfer news, and then we'll get to somebody out of the high school ranks. Kaysen Pryor, who will come, not Kashan. If you've seen his name, it looks like Kashan. It's Kaysen. I promise you his Twitter will remind you of that. Kaysen Pryor comes to Louisville from South Florida, 6'10", 210 forward, uh, more of kind of a stretch forward type player. Last year for the Bulls, 13 points a game, 7.9 boards, 1.8 assists, 1.2 steals. So doing, doing a lot of good stuff. You don't often think, you know, perimeter guy getting all those steals, but nice to see him using those long arms. Get this, 81.5% from the free throw line on 4.6 attempts per game. Again, similar to the steals. I love that that tells me my dude ain't out here just floating around the three-point line. He's getting to the rim. He's driving. I'm going to love this for Coach Pat Kelsey. Good, not elite from three, three, 35, uh, 35.2%, excuse me, last year on 3.3 attempts per game. I got to be honest, I've watched quite a bit of, of game footage and highlights on prior this offseason just because he's been a really intriguing transfer portal target to me and someone I believe is going to be a hit at Louisville and in the ACC. So, you know, we often wonder how do these guys transfer up to the power conference level? I don't think Pryor is going to have any problem. Really interested to see to me. This is a great get for Pat Kelsey. But also, so that happened earlier in the week on Wednesday. Uh, by the way, I, I should mention before I get there, Pryor is the 10th transfer that Louisville has picked up this offseason. Let me just run it through really quick in case you've forgotten some of them. Chucky Hepburn from Wisconsin. That's massive. Corin Johnson from Washington. Terrence Edwards Jr. from James Madison. That might be the most underrated transfer this offseason. We'll see what happens, but I think he's going to be electric. Javon Hadley from Colorado, Abubakar Traore from Long Beach State, and Ali Khalifa from BYU. But by the way, keep in mind, he's redshirting because of injury. And then Coach Kelsey also brought a trio with him from Charleston, Kobe Rogers, Rain Smith, and James Scott. So boy, they are filling out that roster, have those 10 guys. But on Wednesday... Coach Pat Kelsey got some great news that they were landing their first high school commit of the Pat Kelsey era. Uh, Excuse me, Connie Ruths, uh, who was a former Michigan signee, ranked at 247, 35th nationally. He's a 6'8", 205 power forward. He's at IMG right now, IMG Academy down in Florida. So good pedigree there, playing against elite competition. You love that. And so congrats to Coach Kelsey on landing all of this. Now, here's what's even crazier. Wednesday was Pat Kelsey's birthday. So two great birthday presents for this guy, landing coach, or landing Case uh, and Pryor and uh, Ruth's all in the same week within, you know, a couple of days of each other here. Um, 
So that gets Louisville up to 11 scholarships then. Um, curious to see, you know, how many they will use. So many programs aren't using their, their full complement of 13 scholarships in this day and age. If you're not aware of that, it's just in, in the transfer portal era at the highest level, a lot of programs are saying, I don't want to use all mine because I don't want guys 12, 13, maybe even 11 sitting at the end of the bench grumbling about playing time. And then they're definitely gone in the transfer portal. So let's just get 11 guys, make sure we're playing them and give the other two scholarships to walk on level players, not scholarship level players. So be really interested to see if Louisville's done. I haven't seen anything from coach Kelsey yet. Um, but to me, as I look at this, I don't know. I, I'll just tell you with this many transfers, I don't know how the pieces are all going to fit. There's a lot of talented dudes here. And if they can commit to the team, commit to coach Kelsey's vision, which I, I man, I love his energy. And I think it is good for Louisville. Louisville's just one of those programs that college basketball is better when Louisville is really good. So if coach Kelsey can get all these guys to buy into his vision. If he can get all them to say, hey, look, I know you're all coming from these different places around the country and you bring in, most of you, really, really good pedigree. But we're going to do something special here and that only happens if every one of you is willing to do whatever is needed for the good of the team. The other thing that helps is having those three Charleston transfers coming in. They can help you know, everyone else navigate a little bit. I think that's always a win. Um, assuming that's healthy and, and things of that nature. So I'll go ahead and say this. I, again, I don't know how the pieces are going to fit, but Louisville won just 12 games under Kenny Payne in two years. Total, 12 total. Four in the 22-23 season and eight in the 23-24 season. 12, 12 games in two years. Louisville, that's unacceptable. They can't do that and they won't. And I say that to say they're going to they're gonna hit the over on <laughs> winning more than 12 games this year. I'm feeling better and better and better about that prior, I think helps that in a big way. Now I, I'm not rushing out to rank Louisville. I'm not, I'm not there yet as a top 25, but with the pieces they have, the talent they have, there's no reason to me that Louisville couldn't legitimately finish in the top half of the ACC. I'm not going to say top two or top three, but in that top half, remember the ACC adds three teams, SMU, excuse me, Cal and Stanford all coming in. So, so top half of the ACC right now is just top nine. That's very doable. Very doable. Can't wait to see it. Oh man. Congratulations and happy birthday, Pat Kelsey. Now you might recall that the Maui field in 2023 was loaded, perhaps the best MTE we've ever had anywhere. But the Maui field for 2025 was announced this week. And quite frankly, leaves a lot to be desired. I'll fill you in on that right after I tell you about FanDuel. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and so much more. How about this one? I've been loving this one lately. I think it's hilarious. You know, the SEC schedule came out for conference games this year. So there was already this thing on FanDuel called Calipari Specials, but now they've narrowed it down because we know that the lone regular season game will be Arkansas at Kentucky. So now the odds in the Calipari Specials are whether Arkansas will win or lose at Rupp. So the UK, uh, the Kentucky win is at minus 162 and Arkansas win is plus 125. So if you want to get in on that, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel. America's number one sports book. The field for the Maui Invitational 2025 was announced on Tuesday of this week. And I, I, I can't beat around the bush. I can't mince words on this one. I am underwhelmed by this field. And that is a rough look for Maui, who is trying, you know, unfortunately after the fires, in Hawaii, working to get things back up and running. We are, The understanding is that it will be back at Lahaina Civic Center this upcoming uh, feast week. And so hopefully that, you know, I mean, that's great news and we love that. But 
coming out of the players era announcement, this, this new MTE that's going to happen this year in Las Vegas, that is NIL based where the teams are all going to make money. One of the things we said immediately in the aftermath of that is, Hey, look, other MTEs are going to have to find a way to do similar things to continue attracting the highest level elite level teams. And so and I hate it for Maui because I love Maui. I think it's such a cool event. But just right after that players era announcement comes out, we get this 25 field and I just I look at it and I think, oh, man, because also not only in comparison to what's what's happening with this players era thing, but do you remember the 2023 Maui field? Purdue, Kansas, Marquette, Tennessee, Gonzaga, UCLA, Syracuse, and Chaminade. At the time of the tournament, those were five of your top 11 teams in the AP Top 25 poll. Kansas was ranked one at the time, Purdue number two, Marquette number four, Tennessee seven, Gonzaga 11, and then UCLA, Syracuse, and Chaminade were not ranked. I mean, it was absolutely ridiculous. Heck, at, at this point, as we look ahead to the 2024 field, the one that will take place this November, it looks similarly, if just slightly less loaded. I'm going to use um, Gary Parrish from CBS Sports. I'm going to use his top 25 and one uh, to tell you the rankings of where these teams are at right now. But, I'll, you know, if last year had five of the top 11, this one has four of the top 10 in Gary Parrish's top 25 and one and five of the top 26. So in terms of those rankings, it's got North Carolina, who is third right now, UConn, who is fourth, Iowa State, who I think they are flying heinously under the radar right now. Iowa State's going to be insane next year. They're fifth in Gary Parish's rankings. Auburn, who is 10th, Michigan State, 26th, just kind of hanging on, although they got a commitment um, this week from, I haven't, forgive me, I do not know how to say his first name properly. I think it's just Simon Zapala. And so Michigan State should take a little bit of a jump there. Um, and then the other three teams are Memphis, Dayton, and Colorado, all teams with good pedigrees or been playing well um, in recent years. And so the 2024 field loaded as well, if not just slightly less so than the 2023 field. Obviously, we'll we'll learn more as rosters come to completion and we see how these teams are playing in the first couple weeks of the season. But the 2024 field is going to be loaded as well. And it's going to be high level basketball. And again, you know, it sounds like as Hawaii is rebuilding, everything's going to be in shape and in good place there. And keep in mind, Chaminade now is an every other year team. So they're not in the field this year. Heck, though, they were in the field last year and it was still all of that and a bag of potato chips, <laughs> if I can use that phrase. But then, let me take us to the announcement from Maui of the 2025 field. Baylor, yeah, great. Love it. NC State, just off, fresh off of Final Four, but yeah. Oregon, Seton Hall, Texas, UNLV, USC, and Chaminade. And I know we are a year and a half away from this tournament happening. And so I hear that and you're like, Isaac, what? You're like, come on. But I, I mean, there's nothing really with, with due apologies to Baylor, Texas, USC, I guess. There's just nothing wildly sexy about this tournament to me. And when we get there, more of these teams could be ranked in, in, in a good space, space and, and spot, but I don't necessarily expect them to be or plan on it. Using those same rankings right now, Gary Parrish's top 25 and one for the 24 season. Baylor is sixth. Texas is 21. And then crickets. None of these other six teams are currently ranked in Gary Parrish's top 25 and one. And obviously we could go to, you know, different rankings and you might find stuff, but the, the point is, is well made. And for me, it's it's not even just the rankings of that 25 field. It's it's not crazy sexy from like a branding standpoint of some of the like the brands of our sport. You know, again, you look back to 23, Kansas, always the draw. Gonzaga, yes, always. Purdue, so good right now. Marquette, rocking under Shaka Smart. 
um, Gonzaga, even and even though UCLA and Syracuse were down, two of the premier national brands in college basketball this upcoming season, UConn, the back-to-back national champs, North Carolina, one of the biggest brands in all of college basketball, Michigan State, yeah, Iowa State, they're rolling right now, Auburn and Bruce Pearl, yes, all of that. And then you look back ahead to 2025, and it's like, all right, got Baylor, won the national championship a couple of years ago. Everyone loves Scott Drew stayed. They've brought in some great guys in the transfer portal. Norchad O'Meara, Jeremy Roach, they're not going to be there in 2025. VJ Edgecombe won't be there in 2025. He'll be off to the draft. Oregon, you know, they've got cachet with, with Nike and, and those things. NC State's kind of hot-ish right now because of their run. But Seton Hall doesn't move the needle much. UNLV doesn't. Chaminade don't, doesn't. USC is rocking the must bus right now. He brings in a lot of transfer portal guys. So maybe for 25, they'll be ready to rock and roll. But things were not good at USC last year. We all saw how it went, right? Um, Texas? Yeah, absolutely. And, and they're always going to be relevant and competitive and one of the biggest national brands. But you got... No blue bloods in this field. You've got nobody that's like a clear and obvious national champion contender. Baylor, I guess you would say, but beyond that, it's just, I I don't know. I'm concerned for Maui in light of this field and in light of what's going on with things like the Players Era Festival that we're going to get starting this, this feast week. Maui's got to get some backing. They've got to do this too. That's my take on that. Now, that speaking of the players era, we know that Creighton pieced out of Atlantis so that they could buy themselves out of Atlantis and go play in the players era, MTE. Well, Atlantis reportedly has their Creighton replacement, another Big East school, It also doesn't move the needle that much. We'll talk about it coming up in just a second. Battle for Atlantis has become, in my opinion, and probably yours as well, the second most prominent Feast Week MTE multi-team event behind only Maui. They regularly have eight great teams. It was a really solid field last year. Love to see it. This year, um, it was Creighton. Arizona, Gonzaga, Indiana, who's loaded up. Louisville, who we talked about earlier, that's loading up. Uh, West Virginia, first year under Darren DeVries. We'll see how they do. They've obviously got his son and some other pieces. So that's good. Oklahoma is working on putting a roster back together. They lost a lot. And then Davidson. Steph Curry ain't walking through the door. But Davidson is a proud program. Um, You know, obviously he's not going to be high-level elite this year, but whatever. Creighton, as we know, is going to buy their way out of this event to go play in Las Vegas in the NIL-backed players era, MTE. So the reporting from John Rothstein and others was that Atlantis was going to look to replace Creighton with another Big E school. Well, already, we know it can't be UConn because they're in Maui this year. And really, the only other one you would want is... Marquette, um, you know, or not the only one you would want the, the highest level of it that you would want. Um, and I actually haven't looked up what MTE Marquette is, you know, I'm guessing they're probably already in one this fall, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Somebody tell me, tell us, hop in the notes, find us, let us know. Um, but this, I mean, this is a really solid field, Arizona, Gonzaga, Indiana, Louisville, West Virginia, Oklahoma, Davidson. And so I, I was hopeful. I was like, do, do you, one of the things you have to be careful of is that teams cannot play conference opponents in these events. So that's part of why you go out and replace a Big East team with another Big East team. Because in Gonzaga, you got West Coast, uh, West Coast Conference, Big Ten with Indiana, ACC with Louisville, Big 12. I got to make sure I'm saying the right conferences of these new teams. Big 12, West Virginia, SEC, Oklahoma, and then Davidson, I believe, is A10, if I'm thinking correctly off the top of my head. So you got most things covered, right? And then that's why you kind of got to replace a Big East with a Big East. And the replacement, according to John Rothstein on Wednesday, he announced this, is Providence. 
And so obviously Providence is a, is a proud and, and strong school, but it's, it's just, it's not Creighton. It's a step down from that kind of upper three or four, you know, v- Villanova joining UConn, Creighton and Marquette right now. Um, even though Villanova has been a step behind in, in the Kyle Neptune era so far. So as I look at this, I, I mean, this, this is a bummer for Atlantis. Just like we said with Maui a second ago, it's like you're, you're losing a team because you're not an NIL backed MTE right now. I wouldn't be surprised if, if Atlantis isn't looking into this, but you've already lost a premier team to this and you re- to players era and you replace them with not a premier team in Providence. And again, Providence, all due respect, love what Kim English is already building there um, and, and good stuff's happening. But it's just not Creighton, where Creighton is at right now. So that's that's tough and that's a blow. I, But you still, again, got a solid field in Atlanta. So I'm excited for it with Arizona. Gonzaga is, I think Gonzaga is going to be really, really good this year. Indiana, now that they've got a little bit of shooting added to everything else they brought in, I think Indiana will be strong. It's going to be a great early season test for everything we talked about with Louisville earlier. So, so we'll look to see there. Um, also in the midst of this, I, I forget how little sometimes people pay attention or are aware of, but under John Rostein's tweet about Providence being expected, I should say that. I don't think I've said that yet. Rostein reported that Providence is expected to replace Creighton. This one homie said, why isn't Creighton going to Atlantis anymore? And I'm like, dude, come, come on. Just, and, and even if you haven't been paying attention and don't know, it's two clicks away on Twitter or wherever you are to find out this news, do some research on your own. So anyway, that's battle for Atlantis. And again, I think a a sign of the times of what's going to happen to these MTEs and and Andy would agree if, if he were here talking with us as well, if they do not adapt and update to match what players era is doing. Uh, One other piece of personnel news I want to share with you really interesting and, and that we haven't talked about is, you know, as we get, uh, like yesterday on the show, I talked with you about Doug Gottlieb getting the Green Bay job. Sundance Wicks is off to Wyoming. And so um, both Wyoming and Green Bay are going to have a 30-day period where players can enter the transfer portal because of a coaching change. Well, BYU was in that similar position with Mark Pope leaving to go to Kentucky. And at the last minute of that transfer portal deadline, Noah Waterman, uh, you know, who's one of BYU's big forwards um, shoots a ton, a ton, a ton of threes um, is in the transfer portal. And so really curious to see what kind of suitors he has, who needs that skill set. I mean, a lot of people are going to, but this is a guy who attempted last year, like the number of threes he shot was more than double the number of twos that he took. So we'll, we'll see on that, but um so uh, another big name in the transfer portal, like there, there's just always things going to happen. You know, you think about Bob Huggins last off season and, and brought all those West Virginia guys into play. You think about Johnny Furphy popping in the international stuff and then deciding that he wanted to reclassify and ultimately ended up at Kansas and is now going to be a first round draft pick. Probably. I mean, so you just never know. And again, right now we're in the middle of May. Um, and so there, there will be names. We'll, we'll find things out right now. We are, um, as you're watching or listening to this, it's Thursday, May 16th. So we are 13 days away from the NBA draft combine or the NBA draft early, um, entry withdrawal deadline to be able to maintain your NCAA eligibility. So we're going to be getting multiple guys back from that. Obviously, as we expect, you know, we, we wait to see on people like Ugana on Yenso, Coleman Hawkins, JT Toppin, uh, and, and more. But those are just some of the names that I'm personally keeping an eye on to see if they ultimately decide to come back to school. So lots more to come in the days ahead. Tomorrow, Andy Patton and I will be back together. Always love to be with my guy, and I know that you all love it when we're together as well. And we'll be getting you ready and sending you off into the weekend. If you're not subscribed to the show on video and audio, I want to encourage you to do that so quick and easy to do, whether you're on audio or video platforms. If you're not part of the Locked On College Basketball Discord community, you're missing out on that as well. The link for it's in the show notes. It's free to join. We'd love to have you. 
As always, I want to say apologies to the lawyer family. Let's go Wildcats, and until tomorrow, peace.